My name is Paloma Alves, I am 32 years old and I'm a psychologist. I've been a very healthy child, very communicative. I grew up in a UCKG health center. Since as a child, with six years old, I used to go to the kids' zone. My childhood during my teenager years was there, listening, learning. But in my childhood, when I was nine years old, I was abused. That person was very close to my family. And I spent my teenage years, my childhood, my young days, keeping this inside of me. I was somebody very angry, very aggressive. In my way of communicating, deep down I knew it was a way to deal with the wound that I was carrying, a wound that nobody knew about it. A huge difficulty in trust people, especially men a huge difficulty of make a bond. But when the bond was made, I would get too attached. When I was 22 years old, my father died, a person that I was very close, really. And with that, I felt lost because he has been through surgery and the post-surgical wasn't a success. And that was not good for me because all the expectations was that he was going to make it. And on the same time, together with that, my father's death, I was getting to know somebody. With that, I got involved and I got frustrated as well. So that affected me a lot. And with that, I was getting cold, so cold that I was becoming somebody bitter. Someday, hurt, I tried to fix it on my way, trying to show that everything was solved, that I knew exactly what I was doing it with my life, but deep inside was not working like that. So I entered to college to make psychology because it was a dream of mine, old one, and there I faced a lot of persecutions because of values that I carried, thoughts that I had. And during this college time, I fought a lot not to follow the crown because it's something very hard to do so in our days. But sometimes it doesn't work. You ended up with people and they ask you, let's do this. And you haven't been through that kind of experience. And then you want to see how it works out. If it's exactly like that and put in that test, if it's really true, what people told you, the only truth, every person has their own truth. It was only accumulating wounds, because there is things that you do, choices that you take, but not because you think like that, not because you want, just to be accepted, just to see if you can heal a wound just a little bit. And I started to fight with the strength of my own arm and to fix a little here, a little there. And the Holy Spirit used to talk to me and bother me, but I just couldn't surrender. And he was asking, come back. And I used to think, no, I don't think it's like that. It can be some other way in just accumulating wounds until came to a time there was no way out. The Holy Spirit was bothering me so much. Me, I was inside the church. I was not outside. I was not in the world. Inside the church and far from God. The Holy Spirit was bothering me so strong that happened something in my life that I couldn't resist anymore. I was like, or I surrender, or I know how it's going to be the end of that story was not a matter of feelings. I had everything to make me take a completely different choice. I had to go on with my life, with my projects, with my life. No, I want to live God's dreams. It was a decision. The base of my decision was no feelings, it was very rational. My searching to have God in my life was to put everything out of my life that didn't please God. So people that enjoyed my company, I started to cut the bond, to put them out. Didn't matter who was. Family member, people that took me away of my target. 
So I started to seek the Holy Spirit, things that I was not doing anymore. Watch the church programs, to listening to Christian music. The Holy Spirit was talking, but I didn't want to hear. So I started to do it, what I was doing in the beginning. Even if I don't want to do it, I will do. And then the desire started to come very natural to see the things that was going to please God. That became to be my daily bread. I was not looking for the attention of people anymore. If they were with me, it was okay. If they were not with me, also okay. So with the big seeking, I woke up in the middle of the night. I was fasting, reading the books of the bishop. I had to do something very strong. I had to put something in my head, in my thoughts, 24 hours a day that the devil would not access. I could tell my mom about the abuse that I suffered. She was surprised, etc. It was like was being taken away with the hand. Even that I used to think, no, I forgave, I don't have to tell. If I forgave, why I cannot talk about it? When I spoke to her about it, it was like being taken with the hands. I decided to forgive. I understood that I was not the one to be blamed. I didn't have to carry that, that this I would use to help other people. I was sacrificing, spiritually speaking, and the devil, you think you deserve, you think that God is really listening to you. But in a particular moment of the seeking, the pastor said, you have to believe. You don't have to feel. Just believe. I knew I didn't have to feel that I had to believe, but Satan was there whispering. And I thought, the Holy Spirit is assurance. If I'm sacrificing, of course I'm going to receive. And from that day on, I buried the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I could forgive people that I had to forgive. I could forgive myself of my mistakes. I could understand that I didn't have to blame myself because I doubted, because I didn't believe of things that it was taught me, that I could have avoid all the pain and all the frustration if I didn't become against God. Wasn't, it was like I was hurt with God and God is not the one to blame. I got far from him. He didn't get far from me. I came back to God's arms. It's like nothing ever happened. Everything became new. Today, I'm complete. I'm realized. And people say, how can you do it? Wow, I didn't know you've been through all of that. I had no idea. Yeah. And I tell you, I am from the area. And there is things in the souls that... Only the Holy Spirit can heal. It's my everything. I put my feet on the ground and I say, Holy Spirit, what are we going to do today? I want you to talk through me. I want you in my attitudes. Take away all the bad, the darkness out of my eyes. Give me directions. He's my all.